what we are going to talk about today is uh, next features that we are thinking for Visual Studio. Uh, that's what, why we are calling this session uh, your comfort zone is getting a lot bigger. And why, what exactly do we mean by your comfort zone here? Uh, let's do a quick test and please raise your hands if you are comfortable working in Windows with Visual Studio and writing code in C Sharp. Yeah. Everyone, okay. So no, nobody's in the wrong session. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And uh, now raise your hand if you are comfortable with uh, working in OS X with an unfamiliar IDE. Let's see. Okay, no one. Oh, yeah, one. my hand. Okay. Okay. So probably you are in the wrong session. Yeah, right? no, <laughs> no way. It's my paper. Okay, cool. That's all right. Okay, so that, so the first one, that's your comfort zone, right? Visual Studio, Windows, C Sharp. And the second one is not your comfort zone. So yes, yes. Uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, so let me give you another example. I was uh, a couple days ago talking with someone here at the conference. And uh, so he had a customer. They built uh, several apps uh, for Windows for this customer. Now the customer comes with a requirement uh, to have an, I an iPad version of the app. And he has to ship in six months. So he has never done a mobile app before. So what, what does he do? Well, he has to go and hire somebody, uh, subcontract somebody to do it for him. So he uh, contracts somebody who knows how to do iOS natively, delivers an app, but now he has a native app that he has to maintain. He has no idea of where to start, right? So he's clearly out of his comfort zone. Um, so that's what we're going to talk today. Uh, my name is Daniel Casulino. Yeah, and my name is Victor Garcia Prea. We both work for uh, what's called the Xamarin for Visual Studio team. This is a kind of new team. We joined Xamarin recently. We are a bunch of guys who are whose expertise is extending Visual Studio. We have been doing that for like the last 10 years. Um, uh, and we hope that we can bring all of our expertise to improve your experience to and uh, make your comfort zone within Visual Studio larger. Uh, before I click next, I want to thank Antonio, who's sitting on <laughs> one of there. the, you, you, you may want to stand up. <laughs> He's no? The, no? Okay, he's drinking coffee, okay. We grabbed him yesterday, 3 a.m., because we didn't have uh, uh, slides, right? Because we were working on the, the main keynote, not this session, right? But the real one, the <laughs> one with Nat and, and Miguel, and we were working on getting the uh, preview bits out there. So we didn't have much time for this, uh, for the slides. So we asked Antonio, we need some cool slides, like the ones you did for the big keynote, right? 3 a.m. yesterday, after the aquarium, <laughs> after the bar. <laughs> uh, and he said, okay, uh, give me your credit card. And uh, <laughs> he, he spent 26 or $36 uh, dollars on this image that you are going to see now. Th this is real. So if when you see it, you want to say like, wow, right? Uh, yeah, he would be happy. Well, we would be we happy. Will be happy. <laughs> I mean, it was my credit card, by the way. You owe me half of that. Okay. And if you just want to make silence, that's, I mean, we okay. will. So we were talking about it. the comfort zone. So Yeah, well. let's go back to that. So. Okay. Wow, yeah. Great. Good, $36. Antonio. Okay. The animation. We, we will have no idea how to do an animation in Keynote, yeah. by the way. So, so this is Because we are zone. Windows users, so Keynote. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is your comfort zone, what you are used today. And this is how your comfort zone is going to look like after we add a bunch of features to Visual Studio and enhance your experience in there. OK, so let's switch to uh, machine two here. And by the way, some of the things that you have already seen on the keynote that we are not going to demo here are the integration with the Xamarin Android player. That's something that we worked very hard on. How many of you know about the Xamarin Android player? Yeah, if you all were on the keynote, cool. you saw that. Yeah. It's really cool. Uh, the other one is the integration with the profiler. There are also sessions also on the profiler. Uh, so we integrated that on Visual Studio 2. Uh, so that's kind of like a trend, too, that you are going to see more and more uh, in the near future, we are, we are shipping at the same time, if not uh, ahead of time, from uh, Xamarin Studio. So uh, Visual Studio catching up like months after Xamarin Studio, that is over. 
We may want to ask how many of them. Yeah, have that been would be working. a good uh, because I, I I want to see if I need to emphasize how the experience changed or just not mention the past. So, how many of you are uh, Xamarin in, uh, in Visual Studio users for let's say more than three months? Okay, yeah, sizable chunk. Okay, okay. so. Uh, by the way, the profiler, summary and player stuff you mentioned, we are not showing that here, yeah. but are those bits inside the preview that they can grab today? Yes, yes, absolutely. Cool. Um, so let's go find Neo here, and uh, I will just go get an iPhone app, all right? So one of the first things, and I saw quite a few of the, especially the new uh, users for Xamarin kind of struggling, is you just Right after unfolding, you try to build this, and uh, there's kind of like a, a, an annoying and weird error that shows up always. I don't know if you noticed, but have you seen that one? No valid iOS code signing key, whatever. It's like, okay, okay what, what is this talking about? And everybody came across this one during the labs. And I was like, okay, yeah, we, we, we still don't have the bits for you because it's coming in two days. but. Uh, the, the, the thing there is that you are trying to develop, by default, the template that we unfold will actually create an iPhone app that is set up to run on a device, not on the simulator. Now, the more obvious thing would be to run on the, on the simulator or to be able to easily switch between those. Now, currently, there's, there's not even a drop down here anywhere. That's the default Visual Studio configuration to make it worse. So there should be a dropdown somewhere there that allows me to change between iPhone and iPhone simulator. So this is kind of like a high uh, uh, asked questions in the forums. Where is that dropdown? It's like you have to go customize here, uh, go add remove button, uh, solution platforms. Now I go and change simulator, and now I can build, OK? Uh, so that's kind of a, uh, not, not a very uh, good first experience. Now build succeeded. So, uh, what we are doing is, you see this populating here? So we are bringing automatically the experience into the Start button. That's what Visual Studio already does for web projects and Windows Phone. Uh, so we just wanted to have a, a, a unified experience there. So uh, it, it just works. So, and because this is an iPhone project, I don't see all the other simulators for iPad. It doesn't make any sense, right? Uh, so if I have another project here, let's say we go and add an iPad one. OK. I'm still on the startup project for the iPhone. I should probably rename this, let's say, iPhone app, maybe. And because otherwise, then we wouldn't know which one is the startup project, uh, iPad. And if I make this one the startup project, now this changed, OK? So it's tracking whatever you're selecting as your starting project and showing what's relevant there. Uh, so if I just go there and, and start, it will launch the simulator. We can do that. That wouldn't be no big deal. And while it launches, let's go and add uh, an Android app. Blank app. Start a project. Same thing here. So I have my phone plugged in, so it's showing up First, because we assume that if you have a device, most likely you want to try on the device. If you don't have any device uh, plugged, we'll switch. The, we'll select the first simulator that, that is showing on the list. And this is where you would see all the other uh, images from Xamarin Player, for example. OK? Um, OK, so that's, that's kind of like the first one. Uh, uh, we call these unified devices because we show all the simulators and emulators and devices in the same uh, dropdown, and you can switch uh, between them. Something that we are working uh, closely with Microsoft for the next version of Visual Studio is uh, to be able to extend this startup project menu down there. Uh, you can see that there's, it's populating with something, but it's not really uh, showing all of the projects that are startable. So we actually need to tell Visual Studio that we are one of the projects that can be started. But this is something that they hadn't uh, exposed before. But that's something that we were going to be extending in Dev uh, 14, the next version of Visual Studio. Um, Should we switch? Yep, we switch to one. Can we switch, please? So it's a kind of 
small features, but you'll see that this is like a theme. Small things that make it more seamless and integrated. Oh, which which please? Machine one, please. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. So that was like what? Uh, yeah, that's just yeah. What's that? I don't know. Toaster. Toaster. Okay. okay. So now now I don't leave. To, I don't need to leave the couch even to get a toast. Okay. Yeah. So with unified devices, you just got a new toaster. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. So whoops. <laughs> Let me go there. Okay. So um, next is uh, we are thinking about how to enhance your uh, file new project experience. Let's take a quick look at how that looks today. Um, you are probably familiar with this, right? We have the class library, unit test app. Then we have classic API, iPad, iPhone, universal, plus non-classic API, iPad, iPhone, universal. All the kind of apps you can uh, create, empty ones, master detail, whatever. Single view, is, everything is in there, plus the new iOS extension support, right? Mm -hmm. So as you can see, these are a lot of templates, and we were just brainstorming, brainstorming sorry, how we can enhance that. And we have this iOS app uh, have, have, you, have you noticed, uh, so how many of you are using Visual Studio 2013? Okay, cool, a lot. Very cool. How very many are using cool. 2010? Oh, gosh. Okay. Okay. okay, so we have to That's support. That's still good. That's still good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so in 2013, actually, yeah, in 2013, the file new for web apps also got shrinked into one template. So you still can see the old, like, Visual Studio 2012, and you, you see a lot. But otherwise, they collapsed it into one because it was an explosion. It's getting like, yeah, and, crazy. Yeah, and, and the reason for that is this, right? Uh, this is a fancy dialogue that Adrian, right here in the front, made for us. This is not the final dialogue. Uh, and you can see here the uh, different kind of apps that you have seen before listed that separate templates, right? So you can select the template in here. Then if you want to target iPhone, iPad, or Universal, you will select this here. And what about uh, Xamarin Insights, right? This super cool new service that you just learned about yesterday. One check here, and the unfolded app that you're going to get will be audited uh, with the proper Nougat references and everything for working with Xamarin Insights. Mm -hmm. Of course, we are missing here a button where we will ask you like your API key, right? Stuff is still missing. This is really, really early bits, but it should be good to give you an idea of what we are after. Then I'm going to create then a, this iPhone app, and I want also to add some test projects. Why the plural here, the projects? Because this will create unit test project and also an UI test project, which is uh, for creating tests for the really cool uh, test cloud uh, that you have also seen yesterday in the demo. So this will create two projects for me. And I mentioned before the new iOS extensions. So let's say that I want my solution to also include a share extension and today extension. So I accept this. So I have specified here pretty much my intention of all the things that I want my uh, uh, iPhone app to have, just one time in this single dialogue. I'm going to accept this. Hopefully, this will work. OK, this is preview bits. I ignore that warning. And let me show you what I, my solution looks like in a second. Right. So we unfold you an iPhone app. We also unfold something that you didn't ask for, right? which is a library. <laughs> but you know, put your well, share, I really always share handy to, to put your code in there. Yeah, yeah. One, one, one other option that would show up in that dialogue is whether you want to use shared projects or portable class libraries. Mm -hmm. That's a, an obvious one. We have two templates for everything. You can see how the explosion would go, right? Somebody would say, OK, what about I, iPad app with a class library that is shared and, and non-shared, and then the combination with yeah, iPhone. the combinations universe, are endless, I mean, yeah. when we, yes. So uh, and we have a, a shared extension project, today extension project the UI test, and the unit test. And for instance, if we look at packages config here, you can see that we already, uh, besides the arrows, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can see that we already uh, unfolded there the uh, packages.config that will 
make the UI test project work, right? So that's pretty much uh, the, um, what are we calling that, like unified templates? We, or we are calling that unified <laughs> templates. Yeah, this is only code names, right? Coming from developers, not really <laughs> fun names, and, and, and these are for sure no uh, final names or anything like that, right? Okay, so, uh, can we switch to number two? Great. Uh, so Victor mentioned uh, tests, all right? So, uh, uh, yeah, don't send me hip chats. They show on the screen. <laughs> Yeah, you uh, should close that, by the yeah, way. Right? I closed it, but it's running somewhere. I don't know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, Victor mentioned tests. So we already have one way of creating tests with, uh, with NUnit Lite and, uh, and the runner. Uh, I don't know which one is it. I think it's the resharper or something. Um, but um, in the Microsoft uh, community, there, there are also a strong uh, followers of the XUnit framework instead, so, and, and I'm one of those. So uh, we want to support all of the available options. So uh, this is just one preview of where we are thinking that integration can go. Can we, can we check that strong community here? Yeah, how many of because you I, here I, I, use XUnit? Guessing that it's you, right? Yeah. Two it's very strong community. Cool, cool. Say, yeah, strong like, community. Yeah. Like, yeah, awesome. So. OK, so I have my uh, XUnit Android app there. And uh, in, for all the other uh, tests that you have, uh, typically for Windows Phone, uh, Windows RT, desktop, and so on, if you're using MS Test, uh, the Microsoft provided test framework, you would be using the Test Explorer here to discover the tests and run them. So we thought, OK, that's a natural place for the mobile test to be too. So let's go build this. And so we want to bring you back here so that you don't have to install another runner or anything. So there you can see the discovery. All right. Um, I can, let's, let's make, um, well, let's, let's run them all. And the discovery here is happening. You see, my, I have selected my HTC One at the top. So the app is actually running, uh, communicating with the phone, and running and discovering the tests on the phone. We're thinking about bringing the discovery to Visual Studio, since we have the code there. Uh, but it was tricky because the assemblies are uh, for the Android target platform. So reading them with reflection or whatever doesn't work on the desktop, right? You need to be running on the device. But we'll, we'll figure that out. Uh, so I have a long running there simulating with a thread slip. OK, you can see them passing and failing. And uh, you see uh, a little bit the error message there. OK, assert null, expect it. So we're bringing the, uh, the information from the run on the device. Uh, eventually, you would be able to double click here and be taken to the code that fail, ex the same experience you would expect with, uh, with, with MS test, really, OK? And uh, so that's where we're going. The other thing is you would be able to actually also run a selection of tests, like run all the, the ones that failed and not the others, and so on. But right now, the, 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 for, for, for this, we got the run all working, the discovery, and, and all that. Uh, yeah, so that's the second one. Third one, right? Yep. Can we switch, please, to machine one? Machine one. Thanks. So that got you a microwave and oven for your uh, <laughs> sofa. So next is uh, talking about tests, right? We just show you locally running tests. Uh, but what we did now is integrate uh, test cloud support in Visual Studio. So you don't have to leave your comfort zone, go command line, use the test cloud command line provider tools to upload tests, check status, and everything. You can. Or do it on the web. Or do it on the web. Yeah, you still have to do a bit on the web, right? But uh, mm -hmm. we are working on that. Uh, by the way, the integration to see test result has already started okay. with the test cloud team. Yesterday mm -hmm. at the Aquarium, 10 PM, cool. we started the conversation. So um, that would be getting. Uh, progress on each individual yeah. test as it's running, failing, or passing in yeah. real let's, time. Let's so that see we can first the, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, what I have here is the uh, Xamarin CRM sample. 
and it happens to have an Android app and an a Android test project here, which I can right click on and I get this run, this run in test cloud command. Uh, I click here. Yeah, so far this is what you saw already in the keynote, right? The, yes, but the they didn't, line. so the, uh, we have this output window here where we log everything that's going on, and I will show you the reason for that now. So the upload went really fast because I have uploaded this test before, so it mm -hmm. was a couple seconds, and now Visual Studio is telling me that, okay, you will be redirected to uh, test cloud. We already upload the bits for you, but now you need to go here and choose which devices you want your test to run on, right? So I will choose market share. Well, what's, you are an Android guy. What's the coolest uh, device I can choose? Today? But that's not market share, HTC One. Okay, well, I don't <laughs> care. So I will just choose, sorry, <laughs> Galaxy S3, select one device, and now my test will be, uh, yes, uh, waiting for execution. So yeah, so the point here is here. that you are not going to typically going to be look, staring at the screen seeing how it runs, right? You, you would go back to work. And yeah, and you can check here that the status, we are qu currently waiting for our slot, right? And that will, I mean, you can keep editing your app, your test, whatever, while you keep an eye in there. Uh, this is going to take some time, so we are not waiting for test cloud. I mean, this is the real server, right, uh, trying to assign some slot to my account, which is, oh, look, waiting for devices. Okay. So we are now waiting for that Samsung device to get free for us. Uh, so while we still wait on that, let me show you another bit which is interesting here, which is uh, what I just did is upload the whole test project. That means all the tests you had in there, right? Uh, but instead of that, you may want to uh, go to Text Explorer, and boom, what we have here. A new category, Summer in Test Cloud, with the tests listed in there. So you can say, okay, I just want to upload to Test Cloud uh, my account review and my product catalog. Oops. Control. Yeah, I did that, but. Okay. Ah, you have the so yeah. right click yeah. and run selected test. I won't do this because bad things that, will happen if I do. And that's the other thing is running in, in the background. Yeah, and the other also. thing is still running, but this is to show you that we are, we are I mean, just not integrating for, for the test project uh, as a whole, but also we are going to take individual tests and allow you to upload those. Right. And much more integration is coming, like we may want to, Sometimes, I don't know, select devices within Visual Studio. We don't mm -hmm. know if that makes sense. So we want your feedback. That's important, too. Yeah. One, one scenario we are thinking is that what, what happens if you get the, t the full test run, right? And then you have a couple tests are failing and only on a couple devices. So maybe you want to iterate on those two tests only for those two devices and, uh, and not pay the cost for running, again, the full suite. Right. Yeah. So now we are thinking about what the experience would be in Visual Studio because since uh, Test Cloud has more than a thousand devices, there's no tree view that's going to fit those. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it, it is this window here. It, yeah. it, it isn't any easy because it wasn't uh, designed for that. Right. It, it isn't yeah. any easy to have like children there where we can say, okay, this test passed for iPhone 6, but fail for iPhone 4, right? right. There is no easy way to show that So we could, we could uh, annotate them with different uh, categories. So you could see <coughs> Test Cloud, Samsung Galaxy X5, for example, and see which ones failed there. But if we show that, do we show all of them? It's going to be like 1,000 yeah, like uh, nodes at least. It will take forever to populate. And we, we really have no way of adding sub nodes either. So it's kind of yeah. tricky. We're, we, we're trying we to figure out. We may end up uh, just creating a new uh, tool window for just test cloud, right, where we can really show the full mm -hmm. potential in there, uh, allow you to make full selections, show progress. Uh, yeah, and maybe we allow only running on, let's say, a single device from here, which is more natural, is you have a single version of the test that will run on one device if you want to rerun it on the device that failed, let's say it failed on whatever Chinese Android tablet that you don't have at hand, right, of course, and you can rerun that thing and make it pass, right? Yeah. So 
we, we really want your feedback, so at the end of this session, we will allow another 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, so please, if you have any questions, I mean, this is, we are just building this, right? Uh, so th this is super great timing for, for having your feedback and what makes sense, what doesn't make that much sense. Uh, how do you use Test Cloud? If you use Test Cloud already, how do you use it? What, what, uh, what w we could add in Visual Studio so that you don't have to leave there? And I was just talking, uh, waiting for the test to finish, so <laughs> we, I can show you. Oh, we have one question. Yeah, let's, so we can wait for the test to finish. Please. What about debugging and test cloud? Yeah, <laughs> we, we, you know test cloud has this uh, Ripple window, Ripple, uh -huh. right? Uh, we can integrate that into uh, Visual Studio 2. Not test cloud, UI test. UI test, yes. Yeah, no, he, so, he's talking about debugging in test cloud. That's going to be a lot, okay. har a lot harder. Than it. Okay. And, 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 and we will revisit that when we uh, significantly improve the current debugging experience in Visual Studio because we yeah. have to start first there, right? We it's, have some depth there. It's not even working great yeah. uh, locally, so much less, you know, <laughs> test cloud. Do you have any that, other? That's going to change yeah. very soon. Uh, it's taking some time, test cloud, right? But do we have any other question? Yes. <laughs> I want them to finish and show the results. Yes, yes, absolutely. So the, uh, the, the, the thing I showed with the dropdown, those images are actually coming from ADB, from Android, right? So Xamarin Android Player shows up in that list automatically when you install it. All the images that you download will show up there automatically. You don't have to have the machine, uh, the VM running in order for it to show up there. So we will actually start it automatically if you select one of the images there and Xamarin under player is not running. So it's, it's really smooth uh, and really boots fast as you saw on the keynote, right? Uh, one, yeah. Okay, if the, uh, the question was if the uh, device list is showing on the context menu somewhere in the project. without having to switch the startup project. Yeah, so the, the experience there that, that, that we are uh, thinking is actually unifying with the way the rest of the Microsoft product are doing, which is actually your main entry point for debugging and starting is the uh, start gesture. And so you can switch the startup project from there, uh, but you still have to change the startup project in order to select another image another, let's say, uh, Android or iPhone. And, and that's really kind of, we could, uh, that's, that's a good point, actually. We, we could like show the rest of the images for the other projects as a sub list from there, but the main list has to be the one applicable to the current standard, startup project, because otherwise it gets too big, right? Yeah. And, and, and we will really have to say, okay, this is uh, iPhone simulator for project uh, my app one or my app two or my, and we, we will have multiple entries for each one, okay? I, I have, yeah, we will get there, sorry. Uh, Yeah, so the question is uh, uh, the uh, Razor for uh, unified uh, templates. Yes. 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 And, and just one quick observation. I mean, that's uh, definitely no the final list at all, <laughs> final list right. at all, okay? It's just some of them are placeholders. That's the reason why they choose an empty iPhone, because some of them don't work, right? That, that was only for, so the file new that he did was for iOS app, not Android. So, but it's a very good question. I mean, yeah. if, if that's really, the, if, if that's something that you really want, I mean, we, we, could, we should talk about that. Yeah. yeah. yeah but, but, so how many of you are using Razor views, Razor generated views? Okay, quite a few, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, we would be responsible for that. Absolutely, yeah. yes. <laughs> so we, we it's, um, and that's another, another thing that you will see. Uh, we have already started that. We are not making that much progress, but we have already started that <laughs> so with Microsoft. So we, we started that discussion with Microsoft because it was supposed to work. It's just XAML, right? <laughs> and, and Visual Studio already has a XAML editor, right? But it turns out that Microsoft didn't really think that a lot of people would be using XAML other than them right. for defining the UIs, right? Uh, so even though it's general purpose, it, it kind of knows that the selected project has to be either 
WPF or Silverlight or Windows Phone because that's how they uh, 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 subset the IntelliSense so that you only see the types that are for that particular platform. So they don't know about our platform, Xamarin Forms, so they don't show anything. So we were kind of like, uh, we, we, a couple months ago, we were, we were at Redmond uh, discussing this very thing and other, and other uh, topics, and that's something that, that is going to improve significantly because uh, we have a very strong partnership with them, and since uh, both of us and the rest of the team, we were uh, vendors for Microsoft for 10 years. It's like we know everybody in there. So, uh, so it's, it's very easy to get help. So that's something we that, that we know everybody, but still, we didn't get there. Yeah, yeah, well, but we, will, yeah. we will get there. And it's, by the way, James didn't lie to us when he mentioned that that was a serious issue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll so favorite, one, we'll one easy more. thing that we are planning to add, like, uh, right away, uh, probably the next uh, beta or alpha, is uh, the XSD for the built-in types, okay? So that at least you get completion uh, for elements and attributes for the built-in types. But uh, Form is very strong on also the custom controls. So we do have to have a story there for uh, the, the partners we have, like Infragistics and Telerik and whatever. It's, it's like if we only get intelligence for yeah. our stuff and for nothing from them, then we'll get them you know, asking us for that. But it's, it's a progression. Uh, but yes, we'll be working on that, absolutely. Okay. Another question, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the question is, what are we going to do to make the debugger better, especially in exceptions? So uh, I heard that a few, quite a few times already during the conference, uh, especially with forms and uh, exceptions that happen uh, deep down, and then you have to walk exception, 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 until you find the actual real exception that happened. Yeah, that's, that's uh, so. That the, was what you meant, or you, you don't look like? Mm -hmm. On the line that oh, should yeah, break, we have, yes. We have quite a few issues. Yeah, we know, yeah. We know about those issues. Now, there's, uh, and maybe this is a good segue to, uh, to tell you a little bit about the underlying thing there. Um, so previously, uh, Xamarin Studio, and, and, and probably you noticed this, like Xamarin Studio uh, does hit those breakpoints, and, and they show on, at the right line, and we don't. So you say, okay, yeah, well, there are two different IDEs, completely different debuggers and whatnot. That's not the case. The debugging infrastructure in the device, in the runtime for iOS and for Android, is the same, right? It's all the same Xamarin runtime in both. And the layer on the IDE side, it's all managed code still that talks to that uh, uh, hooks in the runtime. So there's no reason why we shouldn't behave just exactly as uh, Xamarin Studio does. There are glitches there because before we didn't have uh, a, a unified way of building iOS apps. So we uh, built uh, in Visual Studio, when you built an iOS app, we would ship all the stuff to the Mac and do all the processing there. And the process for doing that was not exactly the same that Xamarin Studio would do. They would have their own MS build targets and we would get out of sync. So sometimes we would pass different switches to the uh, underlying compiler or the linker and so on. So it was hard to keep these two in sync. So what we worked on is something that we shipped in, in 3.5, like a couple months ago, which we called unified build, <laughs> since everything is unified. Unified, uh, unified. <laughs> So uh, what we did there is we actually now share 100% of the implementations of all the tasks and the MS build targets. The only difference between the Visual Studio version and the Xamarin Studio version is that when, the, when MS build calls our tasks in Windows, we just remote the call to the Mac. But then in the Mac, is the same implementation that Xamarin Studio would call. So there would be absolutely no difference in the resulting binary. So if there's like, a, uh, somebody asked the other day, okay, but I see this property in the property list editor in Xamarin, uh, Xamarin Studio, and it's not in Visual Studio. Does it mean that it wouldn't work if I build in, in Visual Studio? It would totally work, because the fact that it's not in the UI doesn't mean that when we compile, the value is there in the property list, so. I would say that that's one of the major yeah. so we, things we, that we got. Yeah, so we have to unify a lot more things, so that's why. And by the way, Adrian sit here is the guy that did most of that, so if you have questions Yeah, about a lot of the build underlying core, he's the guy, so. Yeah, um, and the tests didn't finish, so, okay. so <laughs> we can move on anyway, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay. Unless somebody has another question? 
I wish it's, it's good. We want to make it. Yeah. Uh, yep. <laughs> good question. Yeah. Yes. And uh, so we we have. So we, we thought about showing uh, what we have so far, uh, but really uh, what we got running so far is the editing experience in Visual Studio, full IntelliSense uh, and completion and you know even the parameter, everything, because it's the full C-sharp language service uh, running there. So it would be no different than editing a, a, an actual C-sharp uh, project file. We have that. But we didn't uh, finish in time the rendering side of things. So like showing C sharp completion on a file that doesn't render anything wasn't really. So there, the, going the, to there <laughs> wasn't any way that we could show the same you saw yesterday. So we thought. Yeah. Yeah. So it, you know to show less than what you already saw, it was not no point. But I so. think Joaquin, who is somewhere back there, mm -hmm. is working on that. I think He's the guy working on it. One more week. How much sketches? Could yeah. Let's say with? by the end of the week. Yeah, yeah, by the end of the week, we probably have. No, no pressure. It. And by the way, <laughs> I, yeah, before I forget, uh, any field that you have, we, we know most of the glitches that the debugger has right now. But please email us. Or let us know, right, if, if you, yeah. I mean, from we, yep. anything. Yes. Oh, we have a repeat question here. Can can uh... yeah, the previous one or the current one? Ah, yes, yes. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Yes. So uh, so we met with the reshaper guys back in the Visual Studio Summit a couple of months ago in Redmond. Uh, so we know the guys, and they are very willing to work with us on 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 nailing down whatever is uh, breaking. It's beneficial for them as well as for us, so we're definitely going to do that. Uh, ReSharper uh, extends very heavily Visual Studio, like even replacing the C Sharp uh, editing and all that, so it's, it's really, so you, you have to be really careful not to break them, uh, so, but, but we're gonna improve that, absolutely. So uh, let, me, let, me, let me show you one more thing before we go and wrap up the questions. So so, uh, can we switch to my machine? That would be two. Great. So uh, one other thing that I kind of realized talking to many of you is that uh, over the past few months is, is that uh, a lot of times the first app that you build is actually an iterative process over, or, over a sample. It's like you want to build an app that does, I don't know, pictures in social sharing, whatever, right? So you go and take the sample for the camera app that we have somewhere, and then you start adding stuff on top, right? So you use that as a starting point. Or you, you have, may, may have more complex examples, and we have uh, quite comprehensive apps also that are uh, going open source. So, uh, so we thought, OK, yeah, you have to go look at the sample, know where to look for them, and uh, then uh, start modifying things in, visual, in, 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 the, in the IDE, know where to touch, like for example, if I want to change the name of the app, okay, so where do I have to change it? CSProj, maybe a manifest, maybe rename namespaces and whatnot. It's, it's kind of like a lot of work. And, and so we thought, okay, since we are bringing everything into your comfort zone, and let's say that you're not even comfortable, let's say, searching with Google, but you know. <laughs> Uh, so we thought, okay, let's bring everything in here. So, uh, Victor, so let's say you don't know well, how to do, let's say, async await. Async, yeah, okay. really hard. Great. Async await sample. There's the description for the, the sample that we have right in there. Yeah, so I go. That, that's still like okay. uh, wait, 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 wait. two lines of code. Don't you have anything like. Uh, no, no, it's two, not two lines of code. It's two projects Whoa. with the UI. Okay, so it's. Okay, it's a little bit more cool. complex. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else? Uh, something more complex, like, uh, I don't know, you have a tic-tac-toe? Tic-tac-toe, yeah. What, you're, you're working on an enterprise and you have to yes, build an I app for... Yes, I have been assigned to build this tic-tac-toe. <laughs> Sometimes you get yeah. that kind of request. Tic-tac, there you go. Tic -tac -toe. You have a tic-tac-toe too. Yep. Well, yeah. two cool awesome. Samples. Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, what would you... Need to build, I don't know, quickly. Forms. Forms. Well, Do you have anything? Forms? Uh, let's say, Xamarin. 
Mobile CRM, that's a good example. Use these forms. Mobile CRM. Another? Signal R. Nope. Whoops. Not yet. <laughs> we will get there. We have like, I don't let's know. Let's say, no, let's say, uh, I don't know, you want to do a Bluetooth low energy thing like they showed in the, uh, in the. Uh, the Quest and. Right. Yeah. You see? Air local. Okay. That thing uses iBeacon, whatever. Bluetooth chat. Great. Bluetooth Explorer. I don't know. So how many of these things, things we have in like uh, 20, 30, 40? Okay, so uh, yeah, you know well, the time it takes to build one Visual Studio template, right? And we don't have many, well, we have a few now already. But if you would have to guess, how many do you think we, we have? He said 20. The one who No, no, let, let me, let me, no, uh, I, I know I have some private information I want to use here. <laughs> you I have insider info? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, we have a question. Yes, no, there's more. Well, these are, these are the Xamarin samples. So I am, I am taking them from the, the actual samples that we already have, that are documented and all that. So, uh, but, if, but we do have, like, uh, so the thing I do is if the, uh, if the sample only contains Android projects, it will show up in the Android category. If it is only iPhone, it will show in the iPhone category. But if it has both, Mixed, it will show up in the mobile apps. So all of these here in the mobile apps category actually have uh, multi-platforms. I don't know uh, really which ones have all of them, but I know that in the mobile CRM, for example, that one does have definitely uh, Windows Phone. I think it does even have a, a Windows, Windows RT. So that's Windows Phone 7 unfolding right there. Uh, yeah. So we, we will have more samples that are comprehensive uh, for all platforms, yes. So again, we don't we don't do the actual samples, so we are just bringing them into Visual Studio. So you don't have to go to GitHub right. or whatever website, copy okay. and paste. So that's the entire run. CRM. Now, if I had chosen a different it. name for the app, that would have been replaced everywhere. So I can, you know, have show a quick demo to my boss like the day after. <laughs> yes. Great question. Great question. Great if you were question. going to be able to add your own samples. So uh, uh, there's this thing. Building Visual Studio and maintaining templates for Visual Studio is very hard. So we actually built tooling that generates this for us. Now, the number of templates that we have here right now, it's more than 350 okay, quick starts. So you can go and play with all of them. And I think we are, yeah, we have uh, a And we are going to make sometime in the near future that tooling available to you. So yeah. you can also the, the tooling, uh, we, we run the tooling, and if they are, uh, we are exploring how, how this would integrate with community provided uh, samples. But, yeah, but this, we'll is, this is in GitHub, uh, and the, the main extension in Visual Studio that brings them in uh, actually can just sub module another repo. So if you have a cool sample and you send me a, a request to add your repo as a sub module of ours, then the moment I accept the pull request, a new build should trigger and a new V6 should be up in the Visual Studio Gallery and include your template. Yeah. We would really love to have yeah. samples from you in the thing. The other option would be for us to go uh, the online template tab here, so to make it appear here. I don't know how many of you have used online templates in Visual Studio. I know I haven't ever, so Not there, much. There, yeah, there's a samples uh, node there. We could maybe make it appear there. I don't know. But the easy thing is just to bring them all in Visual Studio as one Visual Studio extension. So you want the quick starts, you download it. It's pretty big. It's like the, the 360 something quick starts that I have here are over 300 megabytes. So you wouldn't want to have that in the built-in MSI that we so already we have like one minute left. Should we switch here? And yeah. Can we so switch to number one, please? Number one, and we'll wrap up. And we, we will still have a few minutes for questions. Yeah, we're just Can we switch to machine one? Yeah. Thanks. Okay, so we want to really, uh, we, we really want your feedback, right? Email us, uh, we will forward to any member of the team, like Adrian, Joaquin, Antonio, well, whatever uh, is working. Email, so on, on our team, the, the whole team is based in Buenos Aires, in Argentina, and uh, so. Who's from Buenos Aires, Argentina? <laughs> oh. <laughs> the two guys oh, yeah. I flew One, with. Two. <laughs> cool. So I met two customers on the airplane. I didn't know we, we, we had uh, customers coming to Evolve from Argentina. So, um, 
so everyone in Argentina has a TLA three-letter kind of email. We, we got to keep that from our previous company. Yeah. Uh, still, we have the full name and, and, and last name uh, for, for emails. But the team email is VSX, which means Visual Studio Extensibility, at Xamarin.com. It's an open email. You can shoot us an email any, any time you want. Uh, yeah, you can keep talking. OK. And Victor now is typing that email for me and for you, right? Kazu, yeah, ah, those are the TLAs? OK. Yeah. So well, this is the PS everyone, right? but summary for Visual Studio team in uh, Argentina. It's eight of us. So, uh, and VSX at Xamarin.com. You can see we have a lot of people <laughs> uh, when missing. Questions? Uh, Joe Tondat? Tondat. This is our Android and, guy. And Moro. He used to be a Java guy. And now Visual Studio is, is his comfort zone. So, <laughs> so right. yeah. And all this is at Xamarin.com, of course, right? Yeah, and VSX. Don't, don't and miss VSX that one. VSX is the whole. I, I, I am missing if something. you send an, an email to VSX, we all will get it. So. Yeah, that's the team. OK. So I think we are. Right We're there. done. It's right minutes done. on if time. We can do any questions or just uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, wait. Can, can you get the microphone? Yeah. Cool. Thanks. The items that you talked about today, they'll be available in Visual Studio 2014, or will they be available in soon update? Update soon. Uh, good question. So uh, we don't s yet have anything that depends on specific features of Visual Studio uh, 14. So it will be available in all the platforms we support now, uh, even Visual Studio 2010. Visual Studio 2010 is one tough one to keep supporting because there are features that appeared in 2012 and up, uh, which we really would like to use, uh, uh, specifically around async await. Uh, we, we can't do async await. Uh, in Visual Studio 2010 because it's .NET 4, and it makes it very hard to, to, to handle scenarios. Have another question there? Scenarios. Yeah. Please. No mic? Yeah, there it goes. There you go. Thanks, guys. A any information on the uh, designer, visual designer for Xamarin Forms? <laughs> Another very good question. Yeah. So uh, we, we are- It's like big hitting. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Xamarin Forms is big. Yeah, we heard. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, yes, absolutely. So we are exploring a couple uh, alternatives there. Uh, we uh, and this is uh, we we would get we would like to get your feedback on this. Uh, there's a, currently there's like nothing, not even IntelliSense, right? So if I ask you, what would you need? You would ask for everything, right? Because you have nothing. It's like okay, if I have to ask, I will ask for everything. Now, on a stepping stones towards everything, we're thinking first IntelliSense. Next, uh, live renderer for the, sor the source for the XAML in Visual Studio that you can switch platforms. So just like uh, Android Studio does with Android, you, you have the live renderer there, so you're modifying the layout, and it refreshes automatically. And you can switch from Android, iPhone, and Windows Phone and see how it will look for real, right? We would run that on the renderers on the devices or the simulators. Uh, so that, that, that would be the first two. Now, how much of the way would those two get you? Like 80%, 90, 20? I would say very bother with the designer, just the designer, because even the designer for um, Windows XAML, people just love to write the code and see the rendering. That was our thinking too. Yeah. Who else would agree? What, the, what he said is that don't bother with the designer, oh, no because getting the designer right was very hard even for Microsoft. Is that a question yeah. or that you agree? You agree? Oh, you agree. Cool. So, OK. OK, so that looks like our well, priorities yeah. next, right? Some yeah, reforms. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I would say first is debugger because <laughs> but I, I don't think the audience will agree with <laughs> you. Yes, go ahead. In Xamarin Studio, when you add an, uh, a UI element in the designer, you can immediately switch over to the activity and access that new element. In Visual Studio, that doesn't happen. You have to actually build first before that becomes available in the resource. Is that something you can take care of? OK, good point. So that's something that we should work on the, on, on, on the targets in Visual Studio. Yeah. You see it saying building up at top. So yes. Uh, so the, the thing is, uh, Xamarin Studio has its own uh, different uh, build system. It doesn't use MS Build. It uses XBuild, which is their own uh, kind of port, uh, and it's not 
fully, uh, uh, it doesn't implement the full feature set of MSBL. MSBL already knows how to generate code in the background so that intelligence is driven automatically for you. Uh, XAML does it, and we do it also in other places. So we need to use that approach, which works on Visual Studio, but uh, XAML Studio is using a different approach for the, the generation in the background. So we have to unify those. So more unified build. Hello. <laughs> Any other question? Uh, it's just an um, extension on my previous for the sketches thing. So is it going to work on the iOS um, uh, iOS uh, simulator? Uh, so sketches. I, I don't see why it wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, ah, because it's a remote. App extensions right. or sketches. Sketches, the, the remote. So when you type and appears the... Yes, the yes. There's no reason why it wouldn't. Yeah. Right. You, just because it's a remote thing, so it's okay. Yeah, but well, with the iPhone, it's, it would still be remote. Yeah. From Visual Studio, everything is remote in iOS. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. But right now, I think it's only Android on, on uh, Windows, right? No, we're actually working on having both. OK. Yep. No, we'll it's only Android because, yeah, because probably it's the. Um, Android. It's a Xamarin Studio right now. You, you didn't show Oops. the. Yeah. Well, they actually showed Xamarin Studio on the Mac. Yeah. So it has both, and they, sh they showed both. Yeah, yeah, both on, on the Mac and on, on the Mac. Android now, on, on PC because Xamarin Studio only supports Android, right? It on PC, right. Yeah, on so PC. we are going to have yeah. in Visual Studio both. Yes. Both, okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yep, one here. I, I don't think it was mentioned whether, I, I certainly still have issues with the speaking about remoting into the Mac. Um, mm -hmm. Every once in a while, doesn't want to drops. connect, yep. doesn't want to stay connected or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you have the issue if you happen to use multiple machines, trying to switch back and forth between which one's connected to the Mac mm -hmm. can be tricky. So are there things that you're going to be able to do on that? Yes. So uh, the, the multiple machine thing is kind of inevitable mm -hmm. because that's something that uh, Apple uh, imposes. You can only have one machine connected, simultaneously at least. Uh, now, we did add a feature uh, a couple of months ago to disconnect explicitly from the build host. So that allows you to have more multiple instances of Visual Studio within the same machine and have them you know, switch back and forth. So you can refresh the connection on one, it will connect. Now you disconnect, you can go to the other and keep working instead of like, having to turn down Visual Studio. So, so that's one thing. Regarding the uh, stability of the connection, that's something that is also high on our list. It's, we have to balance the things that are kind of like the underlying thing that you don't see. It's like, okay, if the build starts working better, yay, but we, we also have to add the new features that you want, like the, the form stuff and new designers. One we didn't mention is we now have in the, uh, that's already, well, now it's going to be in the alpha channel. Uh, we already have a designer for XC assets, for example, the, the thing for, the new thing for, uh, for using images and icons, whatever, in, in, in iOS. We have a designer for that. So we have to balance the new features, the visible ones, with the background stuff. And that one is high on the list. So yeah. debugger and, 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 and MTBS. By the way, did you ever use an IP address to connect to the build host? Yes. 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 So you would like to know what the IP address is on the build host in an easy way, right? <laughs> Yay! Like on the build host, yeah. The, just expanding the label. Not that getting an IP from the command line is too hard, but still, convenient. OK, yeah, small things like that. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep working on that. OK. Cool. Thanks Thank a lot, guys. Thank you very guys. much. Thank you. Thanks.